and you're a radical. So just for all you people, just remember, Kevin Blanche can walk and chew gum at the same fucking time. You know, YouTube is a library. My library of work is in-depth. I mean, as the biologist, as the activist, you know, as the scientist, you know, but somebody's got a basketball metaphors matter. You know, you don't have to watch whatever. We need to record this and get in this to history. So I want to talk about Weber State basketball and why there's no fans here and what's happened to this fucking thing. I'll tell you why. You know, they had a big win last night. They played well with Dyson Cole, the great game they had. So now three son blaze had the monster game last night, but I want to talk about this. No fans, because I'll tell you why people are sick and tired of this fucking movie. We've been watching this same fucking movie now since 1999. We're tired of this fucking movie. How say with me and everybody just lets this slide. Not me. I ain't fucking like I'm so sick of the fucking Randy Rayism here and the incredible fucking talent on this floor. Some of the greatest fucking players in the history of the country on this floor that cannot win. So the great Harold Arson of the show was here last night. And the great Eddie Gill. I want to talk about this is important. Really important. Historic. So the greatest single game performance in the history, bar none, of Weber State basketball, bigger than Willie Soldier, or bigger than Fig Pen, bigger than Ruben Nemhart, bigger than freaking Damian Lillard. It's unarguable. It's unarguable. It's not even close, by the way. Harold Arsenault, the show. Seattle, Washington, 1999 against North Carolina. The greatest, bar none, but let's remember he had a coach that saw could see, could feel it, could understand it. Let him roll. Let him roll. <coughs> the great Eddie Gill. So Eddie Gill last night, you know, I'm standing there, I'm visiting with Eddie a lot. You know, and there's Dylan, I says, I, you know, I school these players up because they don't know. These sports writers don't know here. Hell, you know, Brett does a great job for the standard. I like him a lot, but come on. He wasn't around here. He's, I mean, we're talking 25 fucking years. I says, yeah, you broke his record for stills, but he did it in two fucking years. You know, Paul's right on. He's like, yeah, in 61 games. We've seen, why is there no fucking fans here? Why is this fan base degraded and degraded and degraded and degraded? Because we're sick of the same fucking movie. I'm the old time fan, sophisticated fucking great fans of this place have slowly gone away. It's like watching the same movie over and over and over. It's a pretty good movie. Got a fucking really great cast. And then you get to the end. And it's like, the fucking end sucked. What the fuck? The end? Who's the director? It was terrible. Just for 20 fucking how many years now? Harold Arsenault, the show. Probably the greatest line in Weber State basketball history said it last night. He's standing on the court. They're partying like it's 1999 with that Incredible fucking team. He says it. Takes the microphone. Eddie hands him the microphone. You know what his last words were? You know, our run that we made, beat North Carolina, should have beat Florida, had him beat. We're waiting for the next team to step up and win a tournament game. Still waiting. And I'm like, oh boy. Still fucking waiting to the Randy Rayism fucking thing that goes on here, I'm so fucking sick of it, I could fucking puke. Now, don't get me wrong, I like Eric, and I've given him a fucking chance. I was totally against the hire of him. He's in the Randy Ray fucking tree. I'm like, no, 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 no. This movie's... Randy Ray was a fucking absolute catastrophe here. You know, let's go back when they fired Paul, or Paul Thompson fired... I sat with Paul Thompson that morning. I was in Seattle. I had breakfast with him that fucking morning. You know, I talked to Eddie about this last night, Gil, I says, and Harold, and Ketchup, you know, and the great Alex Jensen. I'm visiting with him. I sat with Alex's dad at that game, and I'm like, there was more to the firing of Brian Bagman than the incident with his wife did. There was more to it. I got it. It had to happen. By the way, the great Dutch Belknap, where, how come he wasn't on the floor last night? He was here. Great AD. What about the great Guy Beach? I says, the reason you guys didn't win the next year is because Guy Beach didn't get the job. Yeah, boy, Guy Beach brought Gill and Arsenal here. 
So it was was they hired Cravens. Now just remember, the ambassador to basketball here, Damian Lillard, what an ambassador. Now don't get me wrong, what Damian Lillard's done in the NBA is beyond legend. I mean, you're talking one of the greatest fucking NBA players in the history of the fucking game. But I'm talking about you just got to get Gugu and Gaga. Is that the way the fucking Weber State athlete? You got to get Gugu and Gaga on them after they're fucking celebrities? They didn't do shit for him here. All I heard was Jimmer, 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 Jimmer. It's kind of like Rashid Shaheed, which who won four Big Sky Championships. Now they're Rashid. And you didn't do shit for him when he was fucking here. You didn't even know his fucking name. Fucking media. Fucking. There is no media here. Fucking Ogden has no fucking media. I, you know. So. A lot of people, and this needs to be recorded in history because a lot of people don't know this, that Jeremy Boyette was the number one recruit in the country. Could have played anywhere he wanted in the United States. The night after the freaking Harold Arsenault show and Eddie Gill win in North Carolina, I was at that fucking game in that building. He signed. So Pat's here, Dantley, last night. He lives here, Pat. What a player. So these guys, a lot of people talking shit, blah, blah, kind of ignoring him. You know, and there's Harold out there. People are, I'm like, hey, Pat, next time anybody talks shit or whatever, just remember, you look them right in the fucking face and tell them, tell me the team that went undefeated in the fucking big sky. Oh, they did. 2002, 2003, fucking place sold out. Rocking like you never fucking seen. The great Jeremy Boyette. Fuck, what a player. Sold out. Won the big sky. So I told them last night, I says, I told this right to Gar Arsenal Gill's face, visiting with him. You know the difference between Harold Arsenal and Eddie Gill and Damian Lillard that Weber State is? And I said, what's that? I said, winning. This is about fucking winning. Now, that's not Damian Lillard's fault they lost the championship game. Twice? Now, the Big Sky Tournament's a... The Big Sky's a fucking clown circus anymore. Well, look at the officiating. I mean, it's a rock-throwing fucking contest. They cleaned it up a little bit last night. But here's the problem. No respect? Well, they don't deserve any fucking respect. They had fucking won one tournament game since 1999. That was Larry at Montana. Weber State hasn't won a tournament game in 25 fucking years. Well, you can't win a tournament game if you can't go to the fucking tournament. <laughs> you get 15 seats? Well, go win at a 15 seat. When they had Boyette and fucking Jeremy Siegel, Randy Ray couldn't win a fucking tournament. Randy Ray had no fucking business. I told Randy Ray when he packed up, and I told everybody, you'll never see his mug here again. You'll never see his face here again. You know, he needs to go back to Iowa. All of them do. <laughs> this fucking Randy Ray is a coaching tree. <laughs> fucking talk about a gut pull. How can you fuck? This team, this team had all the clout in the fucking world. This team right here this year. Mid-major fucking top fucking. They're ranked fucking three in the country in the mid-major poll. They were getting votes in the top 25. This is the most talented fucking team in the history of the school right here. A lot of teams thought for sure they would go undefeated in the big sky. They lose three in a row. They lost to Sac State. And you're just going to blow it off? Oh, that's okay. No, it's not okay. I'll tell you why it's not okay. They lose those three fucking games in a row, including Eastern at home. How the fuck is that possible with this team? It's not only possible, it fucking happened. So they've lost all their credibility within the right. I wonder why. The coaches fall. This team had a very legitimate chance to go in as a fucking, as high as a 10 seed. Not now. Not now. They're going to have to go up and win the Big Sky Tournament, which they very capably could do. They should do, but that doesn't mean they will. We saw this fucking movie. This movie has played out for 26 fucking years. Well, at least since 2003. I was so against the Randy Ray hire, and I, I was friends with Randy. You know, I remember me, Randy, and Ray and I getting a fucking big argument after that fucking Xavier game. You know, and they gave him an extension. I'm like, Randy, what the fuck? Go okay, the We don't get the players like you used to get when you were with Ron and Bacon, blah, blah. I said, what the fuck are you talking about? You don't get the fucking players. You mean like Damian Lillard? <laughs> Are you out of your fucking mind? I told him. He didn't have a fucking clue. Remember, the Big Sky Tournament used to play the fucking championship team play what? Play at home. Back to back at home losses. Remember the great McCoy? 
in 2009. Won the Big Sky Champion, Big Sky Player of the Year. They lost in the quarterfinals of Montana State. The next year with Damian Lillard on the fucking floor, leading the country and fuck, fuck. I mean, the superstar Damian. I mean, fuck, we all knew what he was. Us hardcore fans, we knew who he was. His coach did. They lose? Yeah, they fucking lost. Damian Lillard never played an NCAA tournament. So they wonder why the fan base is here. They wonder why they're bleeding money. It's kind of like fucking football. Rashid Shaheed wins four Big Sky Championships in a row. Fuck, they got this fucking culture going, fucking raging up, doing great. What do they do? Rip it to fucking shreds. <laughs> why do you think all these guys bolted the fuck out of here to hit the transport port, just like I said? Because they hire a high school guy from fucking... What's this infatuation with the fucking Midwest? What, what, what is that? Some kind of fucking coaching powerhouse? I don't think so. The great coaches that were here, the legend fucking coaches that were here, Dick Martin, Phil Johnson, freaking Gene Fisher, Neil McCarthy, right? Winners, winners, winners. Here's the deal that these guys don't get. This is big time college basketball. This isn't a fucking high school prep school. You know, prep guys go fucking play in Europe. Here's the deal. At this level, this is about fucking winning. You know, it's not about a personality contest, not a love affair. Who gives a fuck about your personality? You know, I liked Randy. Randy and I were friends. He couldn't fucking win. As a coach, I couldn't stand it. I like Eric here. As a coach, not a fan. As a person, like him. As a coach, it's the same old Randy Rayism. Do I see the writing on the fucking wall? I've seen this fucking movie. We've seen this fucking movie. Why is there nobody in that fucking building? Because we've all seen this fucking movie. We're sick of this fucking movie. Great, great talent. Oh, quote. So many players. The great Jerry Cardi. We got no love here. What a fucking player. What a player. Him and Jeremy Sieglin. Fuck Scotty Baffle. I mean, you're talking Scotty Baffle. What's his name? Just wrote a great piece about Scotty. He says he's probably the greatest player ever born in New Mexico. Didn't win here, did he? Haven't won a tournament game since 1990. Fucking nine? Are you kidding me? Well, you can't fucking win a tournament game if you don't go to the fucking tournament. Big Sky gets no love, no respect. I wonder fucking why. Weber State had all the fucking everything that you wanted. You had, thanks to Lillard, Lillard... Put Dylan Jones on the map. Dylan Jones doing his thing. Dylan Jones right there. We have NBA scouts here every fucking night. I sit with them. You know, these players, how great is fucking Dyson Cola played local? I mean, his story's so compelling, he almost fucking died. Why is the media not all over that? Why is the Deseret News and Surrey not doing a story on him? He's born and raised in Utah. Fucking almost died. He's got a scar all the way across. Look at him go. He's a fucking... Said El Threat's son, fuck, look at him go. Dylan Jones, look at him go. The publicity here in the preseason polls, this team had the potential. There's the problem with Big Sky basketball. Me and Dave Patton was talking about this last night, the great Dave Patton, another Big Sky player of the year. Got drilled by Ben Howland. Fuck, I was at that game. We're talking, I says, Big Sky get no love, no respect, because they don't deserve any fucking respect. When you have got to put a package together. Hello, I'll give the big sky you some fucking hints. You've got to put a package together where you can get teams to want to come in here. Why would they not want to come here? This beautiful, incredible fucking billion dollar palace that the D family built. This fucking old, beautiful fucking wealth. That palace is fucking grand. Get them here. Get some big fucking names here. It's hard to win on the fucking road. This team had, they sent them this bullshit fucking tournament in Canada. They play back back up till three o'clock in the fucking morning. All the preseason polls all over the sky. You've got to put big sky basketball back on the map by package. You need to get teams in Montana, Northern, Saxon. No, they'll come here. You got to give them incentives. You got to give them a reason to come here. And then you have to have a good fucking November and December basketball matter. They matter. You need to, I mean, get some good quality fucking wins, which they did. They got the one in California, but then they had to go. Then you need to keep the momentum rolling and win. And then, you know, this whole bullshit 
neutral site, fuck, whatever. I mean, I can't stand it. What the fuck you even play a regular season for? You know the Big Sky's going to get a 15 fucking seed now every fucking year, or 16. Rightfully so. That's all they deserve. So why do you even play a regular fucking season now? Why not just fucking say, fuck the whole thing, and play a tournament up there in fucking Boise if you win it, you're in, in the rock throwing contest. The officiating here is fucking all fucked up. This is about coaching. Do you realize the players that have been on this fucking floor since fucking Gil and Arsenal? Do you realize the players that have been here? Jeremy Boyette. Of course, they went to the tournament. You know, Penny fucking, you know, that team was fucking dynamite. Sold out house. Jeremy Sieglin. Joe, <laughs> Joe Ballin, boy. <laughs> Scotty Bamforth. Damian Lillard. Jerry Cardi. <laughs> Oh boy, Sidel Three Sun, Blaze on the floor. <laughs> Dyson Culler. <laughs> woo, woo. How about the NBA first rounder with Dylan Jones here? They lose three fucking games. They lose to Sac State. They get down by 24 against a Portland State team on the fucking road. What the fuck? Portland State lost to Northern by 20. So you're going to have to go in. You're going to have to go up to Boise and win three games in a row, which they're very capable of fucking doing. But players need to step up. And, you know, the coaching, this whole putting a guy at the end of the fucking bench and not fucking playing him and not even telling him why. What's they're doing right now with the big center? That's Randy Ray shit. He used to do that to players. I talked to him after the game. I said, why are you playing? I don't know. Coach hasn't told you why? No. It's like football. Do you know football was a top 10 preseason fucking team this year? You, that's right, top 10 in the country. <laughs> they won one fucking whole game. It's not about talent. They have talent. It's not about players. They have fucking players. At the top, why is this fucking building empty? <laughs> when it was always sold out. You have the opportunity to see players like this. I mean, it's one of the great products in the country. I'll tell you why. Because we've seen this movie over. Now, who did I vote for the fucking coach? We finally got fucking Randy Ray out of here. The Randy Ray fucking movie was sickening, actually. Like I said, we saw this movie over and over. Great, incredible cast. Great plot. Fucking great venue. Shot on scene. And then we see it end. And it, we're just like, what? That was fucking pitiful. It's like the old Cynodome 70. They tore it down. <laughs> We've seen this movie since 1999. We're sick of this fucking movie. It's like fucking... It's like Groundhog Day on Balco. It's Groundhog Day every fucking day. This team has blown their chance at a 10 or 11 or 12 seed now. Those three losses. Can they win the Big Sky outright? I don't think so. You know, that dog fight against Eastern in here, they get beat. The big guy sitting on the fucking bench at the end. Okay. I voted for Jimmy DeGrapper to be the coach here. And I want to tell you a story about Jimmy D. That great 95 team was rubbing now hard. You know, he missed that front end of that one and one could be the greatest team in the history of this school. Well, in this building. The greatest team in the history of school, no doubt, is 68-69. Big Penn and Sojourner and fucking Phil Johnson. Now, that was a winner. Sackowitz told me the other day that he says, you know why I missed those free throws down there? You know, those influence free throws he missed in L.A. He says, well, Lionel Turner was sitting in the crowd. I said, oh, that's a new one. <laughs> those guys have all quit coming to the games. Everybody's quit coming to the games. Because they're sick of the same old movie. And it's clear at the top. They do a good job with communications here. Brent Hine does a great fucking job with the standard. You know. It's the fucking top. Jimmy DeGraffney. I was a student professor at the number one school business in the fucking United States. Well, there's another perfect example. How do you go from the number one school as a public fucking entity. Paul Thompson. Remember Paul to me. I sat with Paul when he fired fucking Baglin. That fucking morning. I said, you're really not going to do it. I have to. There was more to the Baglin firing than just that incident with us, way more. And I know that. And I really, Paul Thompson's hands were tight. I mean, they were, they were tight.
Kevin, you know, this is going to be the Ivy League school of public schools. Why is it going to be? It already is. We're the number one school business in the United States. I'm the student professor there. Jimmy DeGraffi is going to school there. I'm the student professor. I'm Clyde Cooley's protege. I'm the guy there. They go. They pull that great upset against Jesse Heathcote, the old Montana coach, sending Pack in his last game of his career. Michigan State, Sean Resper. Drill them. Just beat the shit out of them. They go to George. They play that Georgetown team. They got it. I mean, they just drill them. They drill them. That game's over. Georgetown's in panic fucking mode. They're fouling, trying. Ruben misses the front end of the one and one, which he never misses. The great Ruben Nemhart. And then they get the hell married. I mean, that fucking long. I mean, freak. I mean, I think both the 99 and 95 Bruno Bagelin teams were fucking. I really believe they were, could have been. Final four teams, blows. Jimmy DeGraffi comes back. I said, Jimmy, we're talking the toughest test on this fucking campus. You know, finance, business. And I'm like, you know, you don't need to take the test. The test was right as they got back. I mean, this is March. It's that time of year. You know, Clyde told me to tell you, you know, we'll give you some time. I don't need time. I said, when did you study? We played Friday, Sunday. He started studying on Saturday in the room. Okay. He got the fucking class high. He's coached before in high school. You know, I coached a couple of years. They just won the state championship. I, on the list for coaches here, Jimmy Grafferty, Eddie Gill. Well, I hope someday that Damian Lewis coaches here, but. This whole, uh, you know, and I don't get me wrong. I like Eric. I love. I like all three of these coaches. And I, I mean, personally, I like them. But the bottom line comes down to this: the talent. Yeah, they know how to get talent here. But that isn't them recruiting. <laughs> Just like when Boyette came here, that was winning that got them here. Just like fucking these great. Like you go talk to Jerry Carding. Why'd you come here? Damian Lord's my fucking favorite player. Damian Lord. Dylan Jones, Damian Lillard's the guy that got him to the camp. Damian Lillard is, they've blown all this equity this year. It's blown. It's blown. They blew it. But that doesn't mean the season's over. Oh, hell no. That They got to go up there and win three fucking games. It's like I told them. I said, Damian Lillard lost three fucking games in two years here. Three in the conference. Three in two years. Did he go to NCAA tournament? Nope. You know, so... Hang in there with these players. These are mega superstar players. This is the most talented team in the history of school. Again, I will quote the great Harold Arsenal last night. The greatest line in Weaver State basketball history. He's up there talking. By the way, again, the greatest single game performance, bar none, in the history of Weaver State basketball, bar none. Bar none. Is Harold Arsenal of the show in 1999 in Seattle. I was at that game. The game after the game, the Florida game, when they lost on the free throw in overtime. I mean, they had a free throw to win the game. I mean, you know how good that Florida team was? We had them beat the whole time. It was a fluke they lost. The game after that was the Gonzaga-Stanford game with Madsen. That's what put Gonzaga on the map. Remember, they used to be a big sky score. I remember watching Stockton play here. Harold Arsenal of the show last night. It's the greatest line in Weaver State basketball history. Well, you know, we did that in 99. Went in there. We beat North Carolina. Should have beat Florida. We're waiting for the next team to step up and go to the NCAA tournament. That would make a run of the tournament. We're waiting. Still waiting. You wonder why there's no crowd here. We're tired of this fucking movie. This is a legendary basketball program since 99. Has been pitiful. The talent that's here fucking blows my mind. The bottom line is this. Welcome to the real fucking world, kids. The bottom line is this. Winning. Win or go fucking home. Stay in 